I am now sponsored by SeatGeek and FanDuel. Make sure to use code BENGAL. That's code BENGAL for $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek and $20 free to play when you sign up for FanDuel. Also, check out my Twitch for live streams, my second channel for other games. Both links are in the description. What's going on, guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video. It's been a little while, but we're back doing another one of these off-season previews. If you guys have any questions or uh, concerns about some of the things you see in this video, just please wait for me to explain each move, and uh, I think it's going to be uh, better for everyone because then you're going to know how I think, and even if you disagree, just yeah, have a little bit of an open mind. I think it's going to go uh, a lot better in the long run. So the Lions this year were an interesting team. I don't know. It was weird. I feel like Matt Stafford didn't play all that well, but his numbers are not actually that bad. I feel like that's why numbers can be misleading because he threw for almost 4,000 yards, about 200 yards shy, 21 touchdowns, only 11 interceptions. His uh, passer rating was not that bad, and completion percentage was near um, or ab above the league average at 66.1%. That's another stat that you really can't take as a... Uh, the end-all, be-all. But I feel like number-wise, he didn't have that bad of a season. Just, I feel like when you watch him play, he just, he wasn't particularly exceptional. And uh, so that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, injuries were weird for the Lions this year. They made some really good trades. I think trading away Golden Tate was very solid. I believe they got a third-round pick back for that. And they only traded a fifth for the best nose tackle in professional football in Damon Harrison. They have a really good interior defensive line. They do. It's fantastic because you have Deshaun Hand, you have Damon Harrison, you have Ashawn Robinson. Some of these guys were injured, so, I mean, that is a bit of an issue. But overall, you do have some really good pieces in certain areas. I think their defensive line interior is fantastic. You got to look to upgrade on the edge. I think you need to look to upgrade at safety. I do like Quandre Diggs. I think he's best as a, as a nickel cornerback, not really as a strong safety. And uh, Glover Quinn, it almost feels like he's, you know, seen his best years, but he's, he's still all right. He just had such a down year this year compared to last year and, and some years prior. Uh, I don't, I like Gerard Davis. I, I do, or Jared, however he says it. But uh, I feel like his performance has been a little bit weird. And then at cornerback, it's odd. I love big play slay. But the, and Mike Ford seemed like he played all right. This being his rookie season, I believe he was an undrafted rookie free agent. And uh, this is a weird team. I think you really need to focus on offense. If everybody's healthy, this is a team that's going to compete for uh, at least a wild card spot. The NFC North is super competitive. I think all four teams really could make a good argument for the division. You have the Packers with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, and, if, you know, if they get some better pieces around him, particularly on the defense, and he kind of took a step back this year as well, the Packers can make a run for it. So can the Bears. So can the Vikings, where they get uh, some protection for Kirk Cousins and play up to their level. This is this is arguably the toughest division in all of football, just, you know, pound for pound. The Lions are in a weird spot, but we're going to go ahead and start off with some re-signings. Here's who I'm going to re-sign. Romeo Aquara, former New York Giant, so I get to see him a lot there. And I liked him in New York, and he was actually pretty solid for the Lions as well. Got to re-sign TJ Jones. You just have such limited options at the receiver position right now i feel like at worst tj jones is a decent depth option i think eli harold would be a decent re-signing uh just for edge depth and he's a decent special teamer levine toy lolo six eight beast but he's one of the best run blockers in football so i think he definitely has value not as a starting tight end maybe but if it comes to that which it might it, it really might this year there are worse options because he's a great great run blocker and then Zach Zenner was actually fantastic down the stretch and this is not a guy that has to start you have carry on Johnson he looked awesome he looked like a true three down running back Zach Zenner is just a really really solid backup to have in my opinion he was he looked awesome we're gonna go out and we're gonna make some signings though starting off with Demarcus Lawrence we're not re-signing Ezekiel Ansa. if you guys have any questions about that uh I'm sure you don't but I don't like the contract. I don't like the injury prone, whatever. So we're going to go ahead and leave Ziggy Ansa to test free agency. And we're going to bring in one of the best edge rushers in football. One of the best pure pass rushers. And that is Demarcus Lawrence has ideal size, ideal ability to play defensive end here in the 4-3 in Detroit. 
They run kind of a hybrid scheme sometimes, but he would work really, really well on that edge. So you don't have to have Devon Kennard coming off the edge so frequently. This is a pure edge rusher, and he is a very, very good player. You have the money. You're letting a lot of money go off the books by not re-signing Ezekiel Ansah. This is pretty much a better deal. And he's going to be more expensive than Ezekiel Ansah. Not saying he won't be. Uh, but I think for the value that he brings to the table, it's absolutely so important that you go out and get a better edge rusher. You have the money. It's, it's doable to make this happen. So, in my opinion, if you have all this money, you need to go out and make a push while Matt Stafford is still arguably in his prime. Demarcus Lawrence, no longer franchise tagged by the Cowboys. Welcome to Detroit. All right, man, Titeo. So, some people probably won't like this, but this was a really, really good player in college. And I know probably size as soon as I say that, but... He was a good player, and he's been decent in the NFL, almost purely as a run stopper. He hasn't really done too much from a coverage standpoint, despite having like that crazy six or eight interception season, whatever he did in his last season at Notre Dame, where he arguably could have won the Heisman. And that's the only reason why I mention his uh, college ability, because he's not that same cover guy in the NFL. He is a run, stop a run stuffer, run stopper, and I think that's what you need from a linebacker right now. I think Gerard Davis is a pretty good cover guy. Offers you decent athleticism, but Manti Teo is a thumper. He's going to come up, and he's going to, you know, play the gaps, make good tackles. I think that's exactly what you need at linebacker right now if you're the Detroit Lions. You don't have that. Christian Jones does not offer you that. Teo to Detroit as well. And then the last signing is going to be a wide receiver. It's Tyrell Williams of the Los Angeles Chargers. I don't really think the Chargers are going to resign him. I mean, they could resign, but I don't know. They have Mike Williams. They have Keenan Allen. They have Travis Benjamin. I don't really know where Tyrell Williams fits into that situation there. And he was good. He's a solid player. And that's why we're going to bring him into Detroit. I think he's going to compliment Kenny Galladay pretty well. He has good size, but he's also got fantastic speed. This means you can go out, focus on a more of a slot style receiver, maybe in the draft. So I think you have your two good, solid one and two, your X and your Z. This, this works pretty well. Tyrell Williams also to the Lions. Another weapon for Matt Stafford. Now to the draft. We're taking Devin White out of LSU with our number eight overall selection. He offers fantastic speed. We talked about Gerard Davis, Jared Davis earlier. He's a decent athlete. Nothing to the point of what Devin White can offer you. Fantastic speed in that linebacking core that needs so much help. We got Teo. He's more of a thumper. Devin White is that athlete, that sideline to sideline, rangy linebacker with good coverability, can rush the passer. He's a versatile player, and I think he works really, really well here to the Lions at number eight. As a guy that I think will probably be on the board, maybe maybe 60% to him being on the board at this spot. And the Lions who need help in that linebacking core, Devin White fits in perfectly. Round two, we're going Debo Samuel at the top of the second round. In a receiver class where it's so tough to tell, you know, who who's the top five even. Everyone seems like they're a fringe first round, a first round wide receiver. And then Debo Samuel is absolutely that. After a good senior bowl, I wouldn't be shocked to see him move into the first round, but I think he's probably more likely a second round guy. But he's a good player, and he's more of that slot style guy. That, that speedy, quick, agile route runner. And not to say that Kenny Galladay is not a good route runner, or Tyrell Williams is not a good route runner, route runner, but they do other things a little bit better. I think as, as far as a good route runner with quickness, speed, run after the catch, that's what Debo Samuel offers you. And he's like uh, almost your revamped Golden Tate. The Lions still do have a round three. I believe this came from Philadelphia, if I'm not mistaken. We're going Chase Winovich. Keeping the Michigan guy in Michigan. Chase Winovich, going to be edge depth at, at first, probably play a decent bit, and, and I, if I get any of these picks mistaken, I'm sorry, I found this off a, a Detroit Lions fan website on SB Nation, I believe it was, or, or fan something, where I got the draft order, so I'm pretty sure that this is the Eagles pick, I don't remember, I made these graphics several weeks ago at this point, but I think Chase Winovich probably will be available in the third round, could be a second round guy, uh, but if he's there, I'd like to keep the Michigan guy in Michigan. Chase Winovich to the Detroit Lions. Round four, we're going Caden Smith out of Stanford. It's a weird tight end class. And Caden Smith is pretty good. 
probably like maybe a second round caliber player that I think will be available here at the top of the fourth round. He's a good option. Could be your number one tight end. I think you're most likely going to have him on on purely passing downs and then have Levine Toy Lolo in more run based situations. Caden Smith, good receiving tight end. I think he's going to complement that offense pretty well. Round five, we're going Ben Powers, an offensive guard out of Oklahoma. Here's the deal. I think the Lions do have a decent offensive line. I don't really think you need to upgrade here. I like Taylor Decker at left tackle. Frank Ragnow is a good left guard. Was a center at Arkansas. Has been a pretty good left guard so far. He was taken with a pretty high pick, if I'm not mistaken, by the Lions. You got Graham Glasgow at center. He's a solid center. You have Ricky Wagner at right tackle. The only real spot where you could say it's a weakness because you had Kenny Wiggins starting at right guard in a in a lot of their situations this past year. That's a problem. And Ben Powers is maybe that guy that could come in and start at right guard. Probably not your first choice, but I think at the very least, what he offers you right now is depth. And depth on the offensive line is super important. That is probably the position where players get injured most often every year. So you can never really have too many offensive linemen. With the first sixth round pick the Lions have, they have two, also two sevenths. We're going Drew Tranquil out of Notre Dame. Captain at Notre Dame. Not really sure how his skills will transition and go towards the NFL. And we'll see, have to see how he develops. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to translate. But he's a decent player. And uh, I think... Again, when you're at this spot, linebackers, special teamers, rotational guys, I think that's what Tranquil offers you. With your second sixth round pick, we're going Jonathan Ledbetter, an edge rusher out of Georgia. He's a weird player. Could go in the fourth round, could go through the seventh. Uh, he's a decent guy, decent edge rusher. Nothing too crazy about him. I think, again, it's a rotational guy, someone that you try and groom. First seventh round pick, we're going Jake Bentley. Quarterback out of South Carolina. I like the combo of keeping Jake Bentley and Debo Samuel together. Backup quarterback. So, you need one. Jake Bentley fits the bill here. Round 7 pick 2. We're going Xavier Crawford. Cornerback out of Central Michigan. Of course, transferred from Oregon State. Uh, couldn't really find any good pictures of him at Central Michigan. So, here we are in an Oregon State uniform. He was actually pretty good at Oregon State. And then just didn't really show up at Central Michigan. So he's an interesting player. I think if you can mold him into that player, he looked like he was going to be at Oregon State. This is really, really solid value in the seventh round. Let's go ahead and take a look at the offense. The revamped offense, of course, if you guys are new here, this is what uh, things might look like. The guys in pink are the guys that uh, are either new or coming back from injury, as we talked about Kenny Wiggins earlier. Well, TJ Lang is that starting right guard. He's the guy that's supposed to play there, but he was injured, so... This is why I didn't really think you needed to upgrade right guard in the draft at all. TJ Lang at right guard, I think, is going to be just fine. Of course, Kenny Galladay coming back from injury. Debo Samuel in the slot. You got TJ Jones um, as your starting receiver, I think. Tyro Williams could be that as well. Uh, we're just going TJ Jones here for the sake of continuity. Uh, but I think that's most... It, it could be Tyro Williams. I didn't really know what to do there. I think Debo is the slot guy. I think Kenny Galladay is... An outside receiver, 100%. And it was either TJ Jones or Tyra Williams. I think they might start rotating at first in this scenario. Uh, and, of course, carry on Johnson back at running back. And then you have Stafford, Decker, Ragnow, Glasgow. Of course, TJ Lang, Ricky Wagner from left to right tackle. And Levine Toilolo is going to start at tight end. Maybe Caden Smith is a guy that's going to get a lot of snaps as well. Another weird situation where we're just keeping the starter there for the sake of continuity right now from the previous season. So TJ Jones, Levine Toilolo also could look like Tyrell Williams and Caden Smith. Let's take a look at the defense. Lions defense. A few changes here. Not that many, though. I think Nevin Lawson coming back. I don't, I don't like him, really. But he is going to start at cornerback. Of course, big play. Darius Slay is a, a great cornerback at... Um, at that boundary on that right side. Quandre Diggs, we're going to start at strong safety in this instance because we didn't really go out and get a better one. Also, maybe your slot cornerback. You Glover Quinn, he's still fine to play free safety for at least this next year. And then uh, I don't really see Devin White as an inside linebacker, if I'm honest. So I think you have Devin White as your will. And then uh, Gerard Davis or Jared Davis, someone please help me with how that's actually said, as your Mike. And then uh, Devon Kennard listed there at the Sam left outside linebacker spot. I can come down on the strong side, rush the passer occasionally, whatever. Defensive line, 
with Romeo Aquara, it's the same thing with TJ Jones. Same thing with uh, Levine Toy Lolo. This is either him, it's maybe Chase Winovich, it's maybe, you know, a number of different guys, depending on what we do here. Maybe Jonathan Ledbetter in some situations. But I think we're going to keep Romeo Aquara starting at defensive end. I think he's pretty good this past year. No real reason to move him. Deshaun Hand coming back from injury. He's going to be there. He was fantastic. And of course, Damon Harrison, absolute monster at that defensive tackle spot. Nose tackle. You know, rotate some other guys in there. Ashawn Robinson coming back. Uh, I think Ricky Jean Francois is still under contract. And I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with this uh, particular team on this defense side of the ball. And of course, how could you forget Demarcus Lawrence coming in? Signed him to a big deal. So this is what the Lions defense could look like. This is what the team could like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think this is a much better team. And let me know. Do you guys think this team can win the NFC North? It's going to be tough. And if you guys think there's a a more highly contested division all of football, you'll have to let me know. But I think in 2019-2020, in this 2019 season coming up, I don't know, man. I mean, I could picture the Lions, Packers, Vikings, or Bears taking it. I really could. But that's going to do it for me. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Thank you.